We are gonna give you a tour of some of the most iconic pieces of baseball memorabilia you will ever see in your entire life. I'm DJ Ski from The Realist, and all of these items right here are direct from the estate of Tony Gwynn and feature some of his personal trophies, his own personal memorabilia, gifts from items including Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Willie Mays, Ted Williams, and of course, game worn jerseys. So before we get into these items, what we do here at The Realist is not only auction these off and try to present and tell the story behind these items, but actually give you the world's best security authentication, not only now, but in the future through our unique pairing of overt and covert markings. Now, all of our items are taken directly from the source themselves. In this case, all of these items come from Tony Gwynn's estate. Tony unfortunately passed far too soon, over 10 years ago now, and his estate has been holding on to these iconic grail items, um, but now they've decided it's time to share them and open them up to the rest of the world. And for us, we not only want to showcase these to you, but really to tell the story of Tony through these historic artifacts. And let's start in the beginning. Right here, we take it back to 1973. Now, it might not look spectacular, but this is Tony's most valuable award as a freshman in high school at Long Beach Poly High. Now, this is just insane. Most people do not keep items this long. And Tony Gwynn and his wife, Mrs. Gwynn, were together for a long time. She really kept everything and did such a good job, including a 1973 freshman year award. Now, again, while it may look standard, the fact that this is Tony Gwynn's maybe earliest award that is still preserved is just insane. It's like getting a Bowman baseball card again as somebody in the minor leagues, but that on steroids. It's a true one of one of something, especially since he's in a batter pose for what might be the greatest hitter ever. And just like a truly unique item you will rarely see for any player and probably the only time you'll see that. Following up, we take it three years later to the 1976, slightly bigger, Long Beach Poly Team Captain Award. Again, presented to Tony Gwynn. This one says his name on the actual plaque. Now again, not the most spectacular award you will ever see, but the provenance in the history is just insane. The fact that this item is still in existence, you see the authentication from us here at The Realist, is just on another level, and to me, makes this one of the most unique and intriguing items we have up in our Tony Gwynn auction. And as a baseball fan, one of the most unique and early awards you will ever see from a player the caliber of Tony Gwynn. Many consider this to be the highlight of the auction, and that's because it is a rare Silver Slugger award that's huge. It's an actual life-size silver bat presented to Tony Gwynn, outfielder from San Diego, member of the Sporting News National League offensive team in 1997. Also awarded that year were Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Jeff Blauser, Vinny Castilla, Larry Walker, Barry Bonds, Mike Piazza, and John Smoltz. Now, Silver Slugger awards do not come up very often, and the fact that Tony Gwynn had his highest average in a full season, not the short strike in 94 season, while also posting a career high in hits, home runs, and RBIs, make this one of the most special items in his collection. This also was Tony's seventh and final Silver Slugger award he received in his illustrious career. Now, with Tony Gwynn being known above all else as one of the great hitters of all time, this being the award in the season that he arguably had his best full batting season in, and it also being his last award, make this an iconic piece in Major League Baseball history. This right here might be my personal favorite item in this auction, and that's because not only does it feature Tony Gwynn's autograph, but the autograph of 15 of the 3,000 hit club members. Now, Tony Gwynn became the 22nd member, and along the way earned a lot of fans. What is so special about this is not only does it have other players, including Wade Boggs, Paul Molitor, Eddie Murray, Dave Winfield, shout to Dave in St. Paul Central High School, George Brett, Robin Yount, Rod Carew, Carl Yastrzemski, Hank Aaron, Al Kaline, Lou Brock, but three of them are actually inscripted personally to Tony, congratulating him for his 3,000th hit. Stan Musial, Tony, a great hitter, signed Stan Musial. Again, RIP to Stan, one of the great baseball players of all time. Uh, my father's per personal favorite player growing up a St. Louis Cardinals fan. So just a really cool piece. Most recently, we lost both Willie Mays and Pete Rose this year. 
they both also signed personal inscriptions to Tony, Willie Mays. Tony, you are the best. Pete Rose, Hit King, number 4256. These are things you will never see again. These are once in a lifetime items. When you were talking about the greatest hitters ever, Stan Musial, Willie Mays, Pete Rose, writing to arguably the greatest hitter ever, congratulating him on an award and joining this club. Just something that's so special and so spectacular. And these unique provinces are, are truly priceless and make this auction so special. And especially the fact that you can frame this, it is ready to go with frames, with the dates of all these players, 3,000 hits on them as well, just make them all the more spectacular. As we move along through Tony Gwynn's personal archives, this right here is really cool and special. Anytime you say the greatest hitter of all time, I may say Tony Gwynn, somebody else may say Ted Williams. They both had mutual respect for each other, as seen here. This is Tony's personal portrait hung of him with Ted Williams. Again, probably the two best hitters by 90% of baseball's fans uh, would agree. In a sport that basically lives on numbers and history, sitting here together chatting from Tony Gwynn's personal archive. The provenance of this is what makes it so special. Moving along right here, again, RIP to the late, great Willie Mays. Not only one of the greats, but generally the player's favorite player. Almost every player, their favorite player was the Say Hey Kid. Um, this is a Sports Illustrated magazine from July 27th, 1970, celebrating Willie Mays, Mays hitting 3,000 hits. Now that's not it. Not only is it framed, it is signed by Willie Mays to Tony Gwynn, saying to Tony, in honor of this 3,000th hit. Willie gave this to Tony right after Tony joined the 3,000th hit club as its 22nd member, and the unique provenance, especially with both legends being unfortunately gone, especially Tony, far too soon. There were some other unique parallels between Willie and Tony Gwynn. They both got their 3,000th hit in Montreal, of all places, which obviously no longer plays baseball, and both were players' favorite players. If you ask players today and players of yesteryear who their favorite players were, many would say they modeled their game after Tony Gwynn or Willie Mays. So the fact that they shared such a close bond and Willie actually gave the, uh, Tony this specific uh, issue, an inscription, to celebrate his 3,000th hit just makes it one of the most special items a baseball fan will ever see. So we continue along. This is Tony Gwynn's personal replica of Qualcomm Stadium, home of the San Diego Padres, as it says, from 1969 to 2003. Obviously a very special place for Tony, who uniquely played his entire career in one city and at one home stadium, which was Qualcomm Stadium. Um, not only a cool replica for any Padres fan and any Tony Gwynn fan, the fact that it was Tony's just makes it that much cooler. For a Padres fan to not only have this on their desk and reflect on the memories that they had in that stadium as a kid, but to also know that this was Tony Gwynn's personal item reflecting his whole career there just makes it a real cool extra notch in the story. Moving on, something from Tony's personal collection is this Dream Team basketball signed by Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. It says Barcelona 92. And what's unique about this is Tony was a little special, right? Like he could get things. He didn't buy it like the rest of us. He actually got this in trade apparently between Magic and Larry, where he traded them signed bats for this signed Barcelona Dream Team 92 basketball with not only Larry and Magic's signature, with a Barcelona 92 inscription. Another fun fact is that Tony Gwynn was almost as good at basketball as he was at baseball. He was an all-world player in high school and college and could have had a career in the pros. In fact, Tony Gwynn was drafted in the 1981 draft by the then San Diego Clippers. And that makes this piece all the more fun when you know the history that this was Tony's personal item from Larry and Magic and add the fact that Tony could have been an NBA pro player. This is so much fun. I could sit here all day going through this and reminiscing on these stories again. I can't believe as a fan of baseball that collected every Tony Gwynn card as a kid. Where I'm now sitting in the same room with just a fraction of the items up on therealist.com, of course, straight from the source, which makes the provenance impeccable. Um, to finish off this video though, because we only have so many hours in the day, we're going to end with five jerseys. Let's start off with this 1999 Tony Gwynn jersey. Hit number 2997, August 4th versus St. Louis, signed in that beautiful Tony Gwynn signature. Now, fun fact about Tony Gwynn, he actually really took his time with his signature. Despite signing so many autographs over the course of his career, his was wildly legible. Another fun fact 
MLB's authentication program, one of the main reasons it was started was because of Tony Gwynn. Tony actually went to the souvenir shop in the San Diego Padres Stadium and saw fake autographs for sale from the team that they'd bought from another vendor. When you look at Operation Bullpen, which kind of was the thing that, I guess, accelerated MLB's authentication program, they found that up to 90% of memorabilia was fake, which is why it is so tough to trust anything that you buy out there and why we at The Realist only work with the source to get items like this. From Tony Gwynn, the 1997 National League All-Star Game jersey. Not only with Tony's name and number on here, at the time, every player, depending on the National American League, got the same jersey. However, featured the team's patch on the shoulder. The All-Star Game patch and name on the front, of course, the nameplate on the back and number. And then for the 97 season, the Jackie Robinson 1947-1997 50th anniversary Breaking Barriers patch. And we have things of all caliber. This right here is just a Mitchell and Ness Cooperstown collection throwback that they gifted Tony Gwynn and he had in his archives. Um, not only did they gift Tony Gwynn this, he signed this one with a Hall of Fame inscription. Tony Gwynn, HOF 07. Classic old school. This is what you think of when you think of an old school Padres jersey, similar to what he wore early in his career. It's a 1982 Cooperstown authentic collection, Tony's rookie season. Um, not game worn, but still very close Mitchell and Ness replica signed authentically by Tony. Now right here we have something that's very special to Tony. You might think it's Tony Gwynn's jersey. It's actually not because if you look at the inscription, he did not play in 1977. This is the jersey of Whitey Wiedelman. So Whitey wore number 19 as a coach for the Padres, and when he was done with his career, the Padres equipment manager got permission from Whitey to assign number 19 to Gwynn. Now, before Tony's first game in 1982, it was actually Whitey who physically brought Tony his new jersey. Now, Tony was excited because not only did a few players get to wear number 19, but he was happy he wasn't wearing number 53, which is what he wore in spring training. Now, when Whitey gave Tony this jersey, he said, don't disgrace the number. 10 years later, Whitey said to Tony, I think you're doing all right. And one fun fact too, is if you look at Tony's 1982 Topps rookie card, he's wearing number 53 on the back. It's a spring training number that he didn't like. It was a little high up. When you get into the major leagues, you don't get the best numbers always. And they assigned him number 53 before Whitey so graciously let him touch number 19. So unique is this jersey, you can see the specific patches, stains, and 1977 emblem showing plenty of signs of wear from Whitey. Now these stories are what make these items so special and true iconic pieces of history. In looking at it, you might think it's just a generic Padres jersey, you might even think it's a Tony jersey, and then when you find out it's Whitey's and the story behind it, that's what makes these artifacts and these stories withstand history and time and still relevant here today. Now for the finale, we have the jersey Tony Gwynn wore for his final Major League Baseball hit. On October 6, 2001 in Qualcomm Stadium, Tony Gwynn hit a double that would become his last hit in Major League Baseball. Hit number 3,141. Now this is the actual jersey Tony wore during that game, complete with not only the Padres patch, but the Tony Gwynn 1982-2001 commemorative patch that all the players wore. Of course his jersey and all the unique wear and uh, markings from that, but the American flag that all players put on after the tragic events of September 11th. And grin. No better book into this video and to Tony Gwynn's career than this jersey, which represents all the amazingness that Tony Gwynn was. And these are just some of the items that we have up right now in the Tony Gwynn memorabilia auction at therealist.com. I couldn't be any more excited to be sitting here in this room with these legendary iconic items that are Hall of Fame caliber, but we're so excited to give you guys the chance to own these and continue Tony's legacy. It's so important for us to tell the story and these incredible moments throughout the careers of not only one of the great players, but one of the great people in sports history. I'm DJ Ski here from TheRealist.com and we hope you enjoy what you've seen.